Hello there, it's Sandy, and today is the final day of coloring tags. In my 24 Tags of Christmas series, we've been doing this now for six days, and on this one, it's a very subtle type of technique of coloring. I'll be coloring on red cardstock. The inspiration came from Sherry, who sent in this card in my Holiday Inspiration Challenge, and I loved what she did here, making these poinsettias pop out without being popped out, if you know what I mean. She really did a great job on them and trying to figure out, reverse engineer how someone did something is not an easy thing. But I took the new stamp set from Ellen Hudson that has all these sprigs in it and it has berries and leaves and all sorts of things. One little poinsettia and arranged them on a rectangle. And I lined it up in my Misty at the one inch mark so that my stamps could hang out on the left and the right. And I wanted to just do one stamping for the whole thing and get them all done quickly. So if you're trying to mass produce things, make sure that you think ahead to be as efficient as you can. Using some no line ink so that the lines just kind of disappear into the paper. And I'll stamp all four of them and get busy coloring with my Copics. I'm using an R89 to start with. And depending on the hue of red paper that you choose, you may find a different color is necessary. If it's a lighter red, you might want a lighter color. And you might also want to test to see how the colors look when they fade into the paper. The version that's on the left that's finished already, I use different things than I'm using right now because those didn't work very well. I used grays to do my shadows and here I'm using reds to do my shadows. Switch now to an R37, which is the color that I often use to transition from an R89 into a lighter color. And just adding those shadows going to the, the left and bottom of each section of the flowers and the leaves and the berries so that I build up the shadows so it looks like they're laying on the paper. Next, I was stuck with, okay, what color do I use to to transition from that R37. I don't know. I decided to futz around a little bit with the R37 first and add some, some shading to the center of the flowers and a little onto the leaves. And then I went for an R35. I thought I'll step down a little bit and it kind of worked. It gave me a bit of a, a color difference, a bit of a transition, but you have to wait for each one of these colors to dry in order to see what those edges are going to look like. Do you need to soften them even further or are you going to end up with a weird hard edge to them? Because the alcohol in the markers wets the paper and until it dries out completely, you can't tell. Well, I didn't have too, too much of a hard line there, but I decided to go in with an R22. It's a pink. If you know what R22 is, it's a light pink color. Well, you can see a little bit of it on the outside on that white paper. And the R22 worked great to transition from that R35 into the paper color. It, it, if you tried to use a colorless blender, it, I don't know if it would work that well, but this was enough color that I could add a little bit to it and it would give me a little of that transition without being too much. I added some gold onto some of the berries and the center of the poinsettia and Sherry had used in her card, her notes said that she used a white pencil around the edges of the flowers. I decided to try a pink pencil because on the one on the left that I tried, that was white pencil and it just didn't, it was something that just didn't look right. I had to go over that with other colors to try to dull it down because it was too bright. I wanted something really subtle that was gonna look like Sherry's and my white pencil for whatever reason, I think I was pushing too hard or whatever, a pink pencil worked a whole lot better. Play around with which pink that you have that's going to work because different pinks on different papers are going to act a little differently. So I decided I also needed a little affirmation of the stamp lines for the berries because they sort of disappeared into the paper once I started doing all that coloring because it is no line ink. So I had to add the stems back in. And then I colored the others. So I now have four of these tags. Then it came time to stamping the sentiment. And I found this one that would suit it perfectly from 
Colorado Craft Company. It has a nice vertical sentiment to it with script on it, and I could emboss it in gold, and it would look quite beautiful, just like Sherry's card. And I have my leftover Wow embossing powder from the first embossing, just poured it back onto the cardstock and then grabbed my heat gun. I did learn after a previous video to take away the sheet full of extra embossing powder before getting the gun out. Yeah, I did that. I did. But you can't say I don't learn from my mistakes. So, ha ha. <laughs> So there's the beautiful embossing. I love watching embossing appear. And then we have the final here of the tying of the bow. I just wound a piece of wide ribbon through the hole and tied it with a piece of twine, just a knot and a bow around it. Looks gorgeous. Just trim off the edges and fold the thick ribbon in half so you can cut it at an angle and get points on the top of it. Bada boom, bada bing, done. So here is a review of the tags that you have seen throughout this week. If there's any here that you have not seen, make sure you go back and look at them. You can check them out on my videos tab on my YouTube page or scroll back through my blog, whichever way you prefer, and leave comments on all of them so you can qualify to win one of these tags. And on Monday, I will announce on the blog who won the tags. So make sure you claim them and go over today to see the compilation of all of the tags that I have done for years now over on the blog. I've put them all together in one place so you can reference all the tags to your heart's content. All right, I will see you guys later. Take care and have a wonderful day. Go make some tags, go make some comments, and I'll see you next week.